Greetings students and welcome back to another lesson on differential geometry. In this video we're going to talk about curvature. If I draw a straight line, it should be pretty obvious to you that this line has zero curvature. It's not curved at all when you look at it. But in differential geometry, it's not enough to gauge curvature just by looking at a curve or function. It's necessary to properly define curvature. Since the straight line has zero curvature, we can think of the curvature of a random curve gamma as the extent to which gamma deviates from a straight line, the extent to which gamma is not contained in a straight line. The greater this extent to which a curve deviates from a straight line, the greater the curvature, the more that gamma curves away from the straight line. Hopefully this should make intuitive sense. Now, if I draw some random curve gamma of s where the arc length s is the parameter, what is the best reference straight line I can draw for this curve gamma in order to find its curvature? I could draw the tangent, of course. The tangent at this point, for instance, would be the reference straight line which would allow me to calculate the curvature at the point of tangency. Let's say that this point of tangency corresponds to the point gamma of s. If we move up the curve gamma by an infinitesimally small parameter increment delta s to end up at gamma of s plus delta s, the curvature at our original point gamma of s can be found by computing the deviation of the immediate point post curvature from the corresponding point on the tangent line, which as mentioned earlier has zero curvature. But before I calculate the curvature, I'm going to define this n hat, which is a unit normal vector parallel to the direction in which gamma curves away from the tangent line and perpendicular to the tangent line itself. I've actually drawn negative n hat here because I made a mistake when I drew the video bit, so sorry about any confusion. n hat actually points towards the inside instead of towards the outside. So this, what I've drawn, is pointing to the outside, so it's negative n hat. Anyway, the deviation of gamma of s plus delta s from the tangent line is related to our curvature and can be expressed as gamma of s plus delta s minus gamma of s, which is a vector subtraction dot product with n hat, and this expression I'll call expression 1. As I briefly alluded to earlier, the reason we have the dot product with n hat is that gamma of s plus delta s minus gamma of s just gives us this vector which goes straight between these two points. By dotting with n hat, we ensure we're isolating the component that's perpendicular to the tangent line, the component that's responsible for the deviation or curvature from that straight tangent line. Now how will we find a nice expression for the curvature up here? Well, we'll try to get rid of the gamma of s plus delta s by applying a Taylor expansion of gamma of s plus delta s about s. If we do that, we'll get the zero order term plus this first derivative term plus the second derivative term and so on. If we plug in this Taylor expansion into our expression one, here's what we'll get. And let's simplify this. We'll cross out the gamma of s's and we'll ignore the higher order terms by assuming that delta s is very small and that we're basically taking the instantaneous curvature at gamma of s. In addition, because d gamma by ds is in the same direction as the tangent vector, its dot product with the normal is zero because it's perpendicular to the normal. That just leaves us with the second order term, which is the second derivative of gamma with respect to s times delta s squared over two. We can now define our curvature kappa at point s as a scalar equal to the magnitude of the second derivative of gamma with respect to arc length. Remember, gamma is a vector, so its derivative with respect to a scalar like arc length will also be a vector. Kappa is the magnitude of this derivative vector. Now this kappa is a measure of how much a curve deviates from the straight line. It's related to how quickly the tangent vector of a curve changes, which is also correlated with how curved the curve is overall. Now this is the definition of curvature, but it's all in terms of arc length. What if we just had a regular curve gamma of t with a unit speed parameter s corresponding to arc length? How would we calculate curvature then? Well, we'll have to find an expression for the second derivative of gamma with respect to arc length. Once we do that, we've found our kappa basically, we just take the magnitude. But to get there, we're gonna need to use the chain rule and go up to the second derivative of gamma with respect to t. So let's do all that. We'll start with the first derivative of gamma with respect to t, which we can write as d gamma by ds times ds by dt using the chain rule. Let's now take the second derivative of gamma with respect to t. 
By the product rule now, we'll take the t derivative of d gamma by ds, multiply by ds by dt, and then add d gamma by ds times the t derivative of ds by dt, which is just the second derivative of s with respect to t. Since d gamma by ds is just a function of s, which itself is a function of t, the t derivative of d gamma by ds can be written as d2 gamma by ds squared times ds by dt according to the chain rule. As a result, the second derivative of gamma with respect to t can be expressed as the following. Now this second derivative with respect to s is related directly to kappa. We just have to take its magnitude to get our curvature. Before we do that though, let's isolate d2 gamma by ds squared, in which case we'll get the following. We'll multiply both numerator and denominator by ds by dt whole squared, and here's what we'll get. Now, the d gamma by ds term can be converted to a derivative in terms of time by using the equation we had up here for d gamma by dt. From this equation, d gamma by ds is just d gamma by dt over ds by dt. When we make the substitution down below, here's what we end up with. Now, since s is the unit speed parameter, we know that d gamma by ds is just one, it's a unit vector, which means that given this equation for d gamma by dt, this would mean that d gamma by dt is equal to ds by dt. There's a unit vector in there as well, but I haven't written it down just for simplicity. If we square both sides of the derivative equation and differentiate the whole equation with respect to t, here's what we'll get after we apply the product rule. Conveniently enough, we can substitute all of this into the equation for d2 gamma by ds squared up above. When we do that, here's what we'll get. There's a special cross product identity for the cross product of three vectors that looks something like this, where a cross b cross c can be written in terms of dot products like this. If we let a be d gamma by dt, b be the second derivative of gamma with respect to t, and c be d gamma by dt, our equation becomes the following in terms of the cross products. To get the curvature of gamma, we'll need to take the magnitude of the second derivative with respect to s. When we take this magnitude, one of the rules of taking magnitudes allow us, allows us to separately do the magnitudes of the products of different vectors. We can separate out the magnitudes of the cross products, cancel the d gamma by dt's on the numerator and denominator, and finally end up with the following expression for the curvature kappa. And this is the equation for the curvature of a regular curve. Note that the curve must be regular. If there are any singular points, then the denominator will be zero and the curvature will then be undefined. We have to have a regular curve where the derivative magnitude will never be zero. Another quick concept I'll introduce here is the idea of radius of curvature. Simply put, the radius of curvature, which I'll call rho, is 1 over the curvature kappa. This makes sense. A circle with a smaller radius curves more over the same distance than a circle with a larger radius, as I've shown in these two examples here. In other words, a circle of smaller radius has greater curvature than a circle of larger radius. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'll thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. If you enjoyed this lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan signing out.